Right, you guys, got another video here for you on the Windows 11 security feature you should use. Now, I've covered this a few years ago. I'm not sure if I've covered this for Windows 11, but by default, you can see uh, your user account is an administrator account when you install Windows onto any computer. So what will happen is when you go on the internet and you download some software and click on install, it's going to install the software and a prompt box will pop up saying use account control do you want to allow this uh, program to be installed and you click yes and it will install but this is a fatal flaw of the operating system because it means that it's reliant on that user account control and it's not that great so you can see here for windows home and pro the first account you create during the setup process is an administrator account type but it does not run programs with full administrator rights automatically you have to use the UAC, which is the user account control, to run everything with a standard user privileges by default, even for admin type accounts. So when something needs elevated privileges, you'll see a UAC prompt. Do you want to allow this app? And you'll basically say yes, and it'll go ahead and install. So the true built-in administrator account, Windows also has a hidden account literally called administrator, this one does run everything for full administrator rights with UAC disabled. Now this account is disabled by default for security reasons. We're gonna take a look at this in more detail after a quick word from today's video sponsor. So if you're looking to get a full version of Windows 11 Pro, then this is the way you can do it. They have an array of different types of software deals, so check out their website. Links are in the video description. Whether it be Office products or Windows products, they have them all on their website. Once you've chosen your product, you can then add that to your cart and you can use my promo code to get a 30% discount on all of your purchases on CD Key Sales. Just use capital B, capital R09 and apply that to your order and you'll get a 30% discount. And once you've submitted your order, they will then send you your product key and you can then head over to the activation center click the change button, paste in your key, click next, and then click activate, and you've activated your version of Windows. So let's make it more secure by going to accounts, other users, and then what we're gonna do is create a new account. So click add account. This will open up this box right here. We wanna create a local account, so I don't have the person signing information. That little blue link, click on this one like so. And what that will do is it will say just a moment and it will get things ready for you. Now click on add user without a Microsoft account link on there, just like so. And now you can put in your credentials. You can call this whatever you like, like super user, godlike, whatever you want to call it. This is going to be your super user account. So you can call it whatever you like, something like super user or super admin, something that you would recognize as being the godlike account of your system. Once you've done that right here, you're gonna to need to give it a password. So make sure you give it a nice strong password. So let's go ahead and put that in just like so. You're gonna to have to re-enter that password into the password box. And there's gonna be a bunch of security questions that you're gonna to need to add in. You can't skip these. If you try to skip them, you'll get an error code saying this field is required, just like so, as you can see here. So you need to enter these in. So just use the drop down uh, boxes here and just go in and put in your pet's first name and you can call it whatever your pet's first name was. And I'm gonna choose this one here. Where were you born? I'm just gonna put London in here. And you've got your third security question right here. What was your childhood nickname? So go ahead and choose that option or any of the other options that you wanna use uh, for your particular setup. So once you're happy with that, you can click on next. And what we've done here is we've created a super user account uh, for our system. So now we've got that done right here. We can close this off and we can go down to the start button because we need to now log into that account to create the account. So on your account that you're logged in at the moment, click on this and you should now see your new account. And now you need to sign in by using your password that you created for that super admin or super user account or whatever it is you've called it. And it will build that account for you. And you can see it building it on the screen. Now, what the purpose of this is, is 
that you're going to be using a standard user account instead of using a administrator account. And this will restrict quite a lot of things you can do on that account. Anytime you go to make any system changes or download any files and install them, it's going to ask you to put in your super user account password before it will allow you to install it. So go through and set this up how you like. I'm just going to say no to all this stuff. And there we go. We're in the super admin account on, on this system. Or whatever account it is that you created on your system, you're now logged into it. So this is important. So we've got this account ready. So what you want to do here now is go to accounts and you can see we've got a local account and we've got a password on this account. But at the moment, we're only logged in as a standard user because we created a new account. So we need to make this the administrator account and make it a much more secure account for us. You can take a look in the run box right here. There's a quite a few ways you can go about doing this. NetPLWiz, you can type that right in like so. Click OK. And it's going to ask you for the password. We're going to say yes here because we haven't set this up properly yet. You can see the uh, super admin is only set up as users and we want to make this a different account. The Brightech account is administrator and we're going to change that in a second to a standard user. You can see we need to change the super user account to an administrator and we're going to downgrade our other account which we've been using as administrator and we're going to make that a standard user just for protection. So here we go. We're going to go into properties here and you'll see that we've got the group set as administrator. Just change that over to standard user. And this will restrict the amount of stuff you can do on that account. And that is the account that you're going to be logged in all the time. You're not going to be logged in to the super admin account and being able to use that account on a daily basis. You should be using a standard user account all the time. And anytime you go to install any software or make system changes to the computer, it will ask you for the super admin permission and then you put in your password. I'll show you that in a second. Now, if you go into co control panel here and go user accounts, you can manage all your user accounts here. You can see the super admin is right there and it's got administrator privileges. And anytime you want to make changes, you'll see it'll ask for the super admin uh, password. So you need to put that in to do any sort of system changes on the system. This is important because it will give you a lot more security and protection. So let's go into the Brightech account here and we're going to give it a password as well because obviously you should be using passwords on your user profile accounts. So you can just put a name here or a hint and there we go. So we're running the Brightech account as a local account. It's got a password protection on it and it's only a standard account. This means it's going to require your super admin password to make any changes on the system. This is important and this will give you added security and stop any sort of applications or malware slipping onto the system. Now, it's not foolproof uh, and I've made videos on this in the past, but it is a good way of uh, getting used to having a much more secure system. Let's put it into action. We're going to download a file right here with low reputation and we'll go ahead and we'll start to install it onto the system. Now I'm signed into my Brightech account, which is just a standard user account that we're signed into. If I go to install this application on a standard user account, you'll get the general box popping up to go install. And as soon as you click on install, it's going to request that you put in your super admin password to be able to continue with the installation process. So if you've got young children or you've got people that use the same computer, you should be setting it up this way and that way they won't be able to tamper with the operating system and make changes to the operating system or even install any software that you don't want them to install. This is going to be a lot more secure for you and for your family and stop them from getting infected by downloading and installing applications off the internet willy-nilly. That means they will have to get permission from you to be able to install these applications, who is the god of the computer, i.e. the super admin or the super user. Now, this means that any software updates or anything like that, you would obviously 
be hoping to be a super admin before any of this stuff goes on. And this will give you back control of your computer. Now, I believe that this method should have been implemented in Windows many years ago, and I've made videos about it for a good few years just to show you. So let me show you if I want to install a piece of software now. You can see it's requesting that we need to put in our super admin password. So let me go ahead and put that in. And of course, only you should know this, uh, the administrator of that computer. And as soon as you put the password in, it's going to allow you to go ahead and install that software onto the system. Now, Linux uh, does this sort of out the box, really, with the root password. And it's set up like this during the installation process. I hope this video has been some sort of help to you. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now.